couple hundred years ago, people were sitting around fireplaces telling stories and other two brothers lived a hundred years ago could lift that stone and they were the strongest brothers that's ever lived. One of them was autistic and the other, you know, had his issues. And that's me, you know, that's, that's my family, that's me, I'm telling stories about us. I'm Tom Stoltman, Professor Strongman, two-time World Strongest Man. I'm Luke Stoltman, strong man from Scotland. Clear to see that Luke's the one that paved the path to where I am now in the strongman kind of scene. I think he said to come to the gym because he knew there must have been something in his head that said if Tom comes to the gym, he's going to be sitting. You know, at 16 years old, he took me to the gym. And I, the, the thing that I always kind of look back on with Luke is I wanted to quit, but he never let me quit. I think he must have seen something because he just said to me, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. You know, I'll make sure everything's fine. Do you just keep on doing what I tell you? He's helped change my life, and that's just because of me stepping in foot in the gym at 16 years with him to then develop 10 years later and still go strong. I really didn't think in 10 years' time we'd both still be doing it. To be able to keep on this journey together and keep believing in each other and keep pushing, it's, yeah, it's been incredible. And yeah, yeah, like I said, I owe him loads. When I win the World Strongest Man titles, like the first year, that was the biggest payback I gave him was, you know, I shared the first memory with him was, did it beat Brian Shaw, he cuddled me and that was the kind of thank you, look, I've, you've pathed this path to me, I've taken the crown and I'll, you know, I'll repay you for winning World Strongest Man and helping the Stokeman name get into that, like, legacy status. I truly believe that we'll be the strongest brothers that's ever walked the planet of Earth. Show me that I'm wrong. If there's two sets of brothers out there, just go and do it. When I said it, that little small bit of self-belief, oh, it could be, we could be the strongest brothers. But I said we will be the strongest brothers to ever live. You know, it's almost that, that dream, that una, unachievable dream, you kind of say, oh, we'll be one and two in the world, we'll be the best, best strongman on the planet, and world's strongest man, brothers from Invergordon, um, a remote town in the Scottish Highlands, will uh, house the two best strong men in the world. No ifs, no buts, no maybe. Say you're going to do it and do it. You have to work hard and discipline. Everyone can talk about genetics, but genetics get you 40, 50% of the way. If you want to be one of the greatest of all time in a sport, you have to say it, you have to work hard, and you have to chase that dream. You can't let anything distract you, you know? Because people will say to me, you're lucky you've got genetics, or you're lucky you're this, you're lucky you're like Luke's brother. I was like, yeah, I'm lucky, but also, off cameras, I'm probably one of the hardest workers in the sport, and that's all it is. There's no, there's no shortcuts, there's just basically be the greatest of all time, go prove that you want to be it, and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but you've given your 100% every single year, and you've given 100% to every single goal you want to do. You've got to manifest, right? you've got to put it out there, you've got to say it. Even if you don't believe it 100%, the first time you say something, you're putting it out there. Because that's what people say, it's like, I would give anything to be world's strongest man. Well, it's like, well, do that. Like, that's, just give everything you've got. You can do anything you want in your life. Even if you've got this additional need, change it into a superpower and you can be the greatest thing in the world. I've got autism, I've got it for the rest of my life. I need to be able to control it and control it in a way that'll inspire me, but maybe help other people. And then saying it's a superpower. I mean, it is a basic superpower because like only a percent of people in the world has this and every single person that has it is smart in their own way. You know, it's difficult sometimes because 
what we're trying to do, you know, you're trying to be the best at something out of everyone in the world, and like that, the the enormity of that fact isn't ever lost in, in me. So I want to be the strongest man in the world. That's fucking insane. That yeah, it's a cool thing to do, but it's well within your grasp. The first year I won it, people say I want to win it again. I won it the second year. I've not won it, I've dominated. Like, I've not been like big headed or anything. The proof's in the pudding. I like won by ten and a half points last year than the year before. I was like leading the first day of the final by seven or eight points. I've got this line and I know if I'm a hundred percent, nobody can beat me. I think people that know when I'm a hundred percent that I can be unstoppable. Sitting here, I'm not the strongest man in the world, but I know I can be. I know I can beat these fuckers. I know I can beat Tom. I know I can be the world's strongest man. But then, when I'm not, I've got the world's strongest man right next to me. I've got his energy, and it's like, oh, whoa, Tom's, Tom's won that from thing two times. Two times he's won that. People don't just do that, you know. People can talk and say this and say that, but. When you're sitting next, like next to someone that's won the title two times in a row, when you're training with him, and he's got that energy and he's he's going, he's like, oh, I'm coming, I'm joining that train, I'm joining that energy train, let's fucking go, big boy. It's life or death, really. Even when I'm training, I have that mindset of someone's under that stone, someone's under that stone, someone's under that stone, keep doing that, and that just yeah, helps me, I think, rip it off the ground faster and better than everybody else because I've got that image of someone under it, you know. So. Kill the person you love or you'll die yourself. Imagine the Lucante hadn't taken you to the gym. What would your life be like? <laughs> Jeez, I mean... Probably not no kind of fault of families or anything. I may have gone into like childcare or maybe like somewhere down even worse than that because I know some things and I knew I, I know I was really really bad at it and I know that like sometimes my mum and dad could control me. I think mentally I would have really said, I wouldn't have met like a Shane Ed, I wouldn't have met half the people I've met, I wouldn't have been able to have this life. I probably would have been I wouldn't even had a job, I don't think so. If people can see us and realise that you know, there's a lot more potential for the average person. You know, because I wasn't exceptional in anything I did. I don't think I was an exceptional person growing up in my 20s. I had a good work ethic. I, was, I wasn't scared of work, but I wasn't an exceptional engineer or an exceptional, like, fitness person, whatever, you know. I, so you don't have to be this super fucking high-end, except oh, I'm just smashing everything, I'm the best at everything. You don't have to be the best at everything you do. You just have to have the ability, I think, to realise when it's time to get help or trying to learn from other people or, you know, use other people's successes like inspiration. We'll be remembered forever for being the strongest brothers to ever live. But I think we'll be remembered for a lot more than just that. And that's my my hope. I 
guys, so today I'm gonna to walk you through the walk first. Hey guys, this is week one of the Atlas Stone tutorial by Tom Stoneman. Right guys, today's tutorial is 